Hello everyone, my name is Scott Fratcher. I'm captain of Orion, a 90-foot catamaran, and I'm also doing the engineering on the boat. And in this video, we're going to talk about heat exchangers, impellers, water flow, and, uh, and how to change an impeller on, uh, on one of these marine generators, which works kind of the same for a marine engine, for your, for your uh, propulsion engine, or for a generator. It's all kind of basically the same, the same thing. So the first thing I'm going to point out here is the smoke coming out of the engine. Now this engine has an air-water separator, which means only the exhaust comes out of the uh, comes out uh, visually here, and the water drains out below the boat. So what that means to you is is that we're actually seeing the the smoke from the engine without the blur 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 that you might normally see coming out of uh, let's say a normal engine. What I want to call your attention to is how that smoke is actually steam. See how it's fading away. And if you watch a particular area of the smoke, it actually disappears. It doesn't dissipate. It, it kind of fades away. And so, so that tells me that what we have is hot water that's entering the exhaust channel and turning into steam and then exiting the boat and dissipating. And that tells me we probably don't have enough water flow. So the next, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go look at Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the temperature that the engine is running at. Now, there's a lot of reserve cooling in the heat exchanger. And so what that means is, is that as soon as you see the temperature start to rise, it should be running at ADC, this gauge that we're looking at right here, which is the engine temperature. It should be running at ADC. So if you see it, when I see it here at 83, 84, I know that something is up. So we're going to now take off the cover for the impeller and get a good look at the at the impeller. But first we're going to look at the water flow and we're going to compare the water flow at the beginning of the video and at the end of the video. So here's the water flow through the sea strainer and we're going to compare this at the end. Yeah, you see we're missing those impeller blades? Mm -hmm. Okay, now there's a couple things that are going to happen with that. One of them is we've got to find those blades because they're going to be in the system clogging more water. Okay, so now we're going to look at this impeller a little bit. One thing to notice is that some of the blades are bent over and holding shape bent over. That's a clear sign it's time to replace the impeller. This impeller has been in uh, far too long. And so if, if just the blades were bent over, that would mean a reduced flow, a reduced water flow. And now we've got missing blades. So if, uh, if this had been caught earlier, it probably would have been a lot easier and wouldn't have to take the heat exchanger apart. So I just point that out. Okay, so now we go back to log. <laughs> this piece of first I'm going to get that out of there because that's dripping on my hands and that's hot okay so there's another piece okay so now we lay those on are we still missing anything uh, yeah yeah I don't know I can feel another one right yeah here. there must be more than that that one I've lost so that one now I got to take this cover off the back of the uh, Because, and I hope that isn't going to drain all of my coolant, it can't, because that's going to be the spot right there that goes, that's going to be coolant between there and there. And then this is going to be salt water in right here, and then, is it just going to be, and then salt water out right here. So that tells us that this is going to be a double pass because both of the in and the out are on the same side of the heat exchanger. Okay, so what that tells us is that when we take off this back plate here, we'll be able to get into the heat exchanger, my hands on the back plate, but it'll look just like this one here. But because it's a double pass, this may have a line on it, a cast line, that has to be put back so that the water comes one direction, around and back the other. That, it may be in the casting on this piece, it may be on the casting on that piece. So when the time when we pull off this cover, we want to make sure that we take the cover and put it back on the same, the same configuration. Now this right here, see that right there? And see how we got a little bit of corrosion going right there? Mm -hmm. Okay, now that could be from a couple things. One of them is that that could be just because this pump is leaking a little bit around this seal. See right in here, there's a... Uh, some light on that. So right in here, behind this shaft is a seal that prevents salt water from going through this shaft and coming out here. 
And what happens is eventually, if you just keep ignoring this little corrosion right there, then this gap will fill up with salt water, and then it'll start putting seawater past this little shaft, and it'll drop down and fill up the engine with salt water. And so that's what the purpose of that gap is. You look at that gap. Now in this case, I see that there's a little bit of corrosion right there, which tells me that there's a little bit of water that's leaked through. And so, but I'm thinking that this whole seawater system was kind of clogged because the impeller was coming apart. So what also this tells us is we should probably do this on the other generator. Otherwise, we'll have to do this at sea. Okay, this plate right here is the plate that the front of the that the front of the impeller is rubbing against this plate. So that means that this plate has to make this plate is part of the seal. The water doesn't want to go around one of those rubber impellers and back the other direction. So when we look at this plate right here, we feel for how deep these grooves are. And once the grooves start to get worse and worse and worse and worse, then what you do is knock the paint off of this side and flip this plate over and then you get a whole new sealing surface. So you get a second run at sealing. And then once both sides of this impeller plate are, or once both sides of this pump plate have been worn, then we need a new pump plate. Okay, so now this is the two sides of the heat exchanger. See, salt water comes in one side, goes up through the heat exchanger, comes back down and comes out here. So what, what the point of all this is, is that this piece has to be put back on in the same configuration. In other words, you can't turn that 90 degrees and put it back on because what it'll do is it'll change the flow. In this case, this really is just a piece of rubber over the casting. So this one's pretty easy. We can just kind of feel it when we get into the right position and then just hold it while we tighten up the bolt. But sometimes you pull off the cap of a heat exchanger and this piece right here is what actually controls what side the water goes up and what side the water comes back down. In other words, this would be a piece of bronze on the cap. And you can put the cap on in any which configuration. And if you don't get it right, then the water isn't really making its two passes. And oftentimes what will happen is the water will still cool because some water is going through the heat exchanger. So nobody notices. They just look at it and go, oh, hey, yeah, things working, and off they go. And then a little while later, when the heat exchanger starts to become a little bit clogged and isn't working at 100%, is when they start to notice the problem. And then the next guy is just going mad because he's like, wow, you know, the heat exchanger, and it's not pulling off the temperature, and then they're putting it back together like it came apart. So that's... Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of grease on the shaft because that'll keep it so that next time when we go to take this apart, did you see how like when I was able to just pull that uh, um, that impeller out, sometimes they're just stuck like. And then instead of doing what we're doing right now, we're off doing some really difficult pull. Okay, now see how I'm just sliding that right in there? And that's it, just push it in with my hand, take this little piece, push it over the top, and that just kind of hopefully seals off that shaft a little bit. Okay, and then that's it now take my cover. I can see my old mark there where that mark was sitting against the little compressor. Okay, now I'm going to put the first bolt in. Just to hold the plate in place. Okay, now I'm going to take some grease and I'm going to put it in the other bolt holes. And what that will do and I can pull that last bolt out. The first bolt I pulled, put in, I can pull it out last and re-grease it. So I put the top bolt in first. That holds the plate in place. Now I can put all of the all the securing bolts in. If you're collecting spares, these things are really good to have spares of because they fall out and they just disappear. And then there you are, like someplace trying to find some and then the next thing you know some of them can only find a steel bolt and they put a steel bolt in and then it's the beginning of the end for the pump okay so now get that just to where I can feel it snug up do the same on the exact opposite side and then Okay, now I can go around and give these just a little bit more. Remembering that they're really small bolts, so we don't want to just cram some force onto them. And I'm only squeezing against an O-ring, so tightening up 
uh, tightening up more doesn't prevent leaks. It's either the O-ring either holds or it doesn't. Once the O-ring is set in position, then that's it. It's in position. So now we should, at this point, be able to start the engine, check for leaks, and then see the amount of flow that we have on that C-strainer down there. Okay, so Jaime, do you remember how to start the engine from that position? Up here. Yes, okay, so see up top there? So now it's the same thing as the other. So now when we start the engine after changing the impeller, I put my hand on the impeller plate, on the pump plate right there, and make sure it goes cold. And be careful, it could jump and get, if it doesn't pump, it'll get really hot. And that's your signal to shut down the engine and figure out what's wrong. Now here's the amount of water now flowing through the uh, now flowing through the, and there's the old, there's the new, and there's the old. See how that there's, the one isn't even completely full? Okay, so that's a clear signal that we've made progress, that we're pumping more water right now than we were. So that's a, uh, so that's a good thing. Now here's the, uh, here's the temperature after we ran the engine for about 15 minutes under load. And see, it's sitting down there at 80 now, right at 80. And that's, that's where we want it to be sitting. And so it was just starting to bump up a little bit before, and so that means that we had used up all of our reserve cooling. And, uh, and the engine was starting to run hot. And now here is the exhaust. Now, take a look at the amount of, because it's going to be dry coming out. So there's always going to be a little bit of steam in there. But we want to know, is there more steam or less steam? And did we make progress? So now we're going to take a look right here. And, uh, and I'm going to give you some of the old amount of steam and the new. And we'll see if we actually, if we made progress. Okay, so there's the old. Yeah, it looks like a little bit more. There's the new. There's the old new it looks like it looks like we did something there doesn't it well i'm hoping maybe i'm just imagining it but i think we made progress at uh at that point so uh So this is part two. So after <laughs> after sitting around and looking at that uh, that exhaust for the next day, <laughs> I came to the conclusion that well, we had made progress, but we hadn't made that much progress. Was, we still had steam in the exhaust, and we shouldn't have steam in the exhaust. So something is still wrong. So we took off the exhaust elbow, and this is us beating the uh, the the exhaust elbow was almost completely clogged. So this is us trying to beat the the clog out of the exhaust elbow. So I'm going to go back here, and now you'll see uh, we're going to explain what an exhaust elbow does and. Uh, and, uh, and, and then we'll go on from there and see if we made real progress. So where we are now is we fixed the cooling water pump, the seawater cooling pump, and we still had steam coming out of the engine. So now we know the, the pump impeller blades had to be changed, so we fixed that. We cleaned the exhaust channel or the, uh, the heat exchanger, so that part's fixed, and yet still we had steam coming out of the back of the engine. And so. The next thing we did was we took off the exhaust elbow right here. And we kind of got keyed up on that because when we got the pump working, we saw we had a little leak right here on the inside. And this is where salt water would come in. So what this is, this is the exhaust elbow. And so this is a pipe inside of a pipe. So inside of this port comes hot exhaust coming out of the back of the engine. That's probably at about 500 C. Coming into this port is just the regular salt water. So that salt water now has cooled the engine, cooled the exhaust manifold and now it goes to a anti-siphon loop and comes out here where it goes into this pipe inside of a pipe. So the outside of this pipe right here, the outside of this pipe is salt water, the inside is hot exhaust and right here you can see that there's four holes that shoot salt water and those holes were pretty much blocked and so now we had another restriction in the salt water exhaust system and so so now we're going to go put this back on. We scraped it all out with chisels and all this stuff here is all what came out of those, uh, out of those holes. And you can see it's, it's mostly like swelled rust. It's, it's more, I thought it was going to be like clogged salt, but it wasn't, which is, uh, uh, which is kind of interesting. And uh, one more thing to note here, we've got this little device right here. And what that is, that's a water flow sensor. So if water wasn't flowing or if the water wasn't in this section of the, uh, of the exhaust, then this would uh, send a signal to the computer that runs the generator, and the generator would shut down. Okay, so now this is the water that's flowing. It looks to me like a lot more water is flowing, so I'm, I'm much happier with that. And, uh, and see, no bubbles, no voids in, in the sea strainer. And, uh, and it looks like that water is just whizzing around, so I'm quite happy there. 
And now we come over and look at the exhaust. So now the engine's been running here for probably about 15 to 20 minutes under uh, under heavy load, charging the batteries at about, uh, we're probably charging 350 amps at 24 volts. So there's, uh, there's a pretty good load right there. And now we have no steam. So now I think we've finally gotten it. Uh, zero steam and uh, clean exhaust, no, nothing visible coming in, except for uh, every now and then you see a little bubble down there in the bottom, and that's... Uh, um, uh, that's the water coming out from the below the water line ex uh, water exhaust. So that's it. I think we finally got it.